In this edition of JavaScript Problems, we are going to deal with a simpler issue, but one that is still important in a lot of applications. We are going to look at how you would search through an array. We will take a look at the traditional methods that have been available for some time. This is using index of or last index of. But we will also take a look at two new methods that were added to the array object prototype with ES6. These methods provide more flexibility when searching for a value in an array. So let's first look at last index of and index of. Now, the syntax of these two statements may be familiar. So this is probably a review for most of you. So let's move through it quickly. First, this is how you would use it. Using the dot syntax, you use either index of or last index of from the array object. And inside of parentheses, you indicate which value you are looking for. The JavaScript engine will then search through every value in the array and return the index or the position of that value when it finds it in the array. So it searches until it finds the value. Once it finds the value, it stops its search. Now index of searches from the beginning of the array. Last index of begins searching from the end of the array. And as mentioned, it returns the index of that value when found. So if it finds it in the first position, it will return an index of 0. Second position, 1, and so on. Finally, if it cannot find the value, it returns a negative one. A negative one indicates that the value was not found in the array. So let's do a quick example of index of and last index of. So I'll do this in the console. So let's first define an array here. Just going to use numbers. We got several numbers in there. Now once that array is defined, I can then search for, say, the number 11. Let's see if that is found in the array. And we'll use index of. Now inside of the parentheses, we put the value that we're looking for. And notice that it returns the index or the position. So 1 is 0, 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4. So in 11 is at index 4 in that array. Now, if we were to do last index of for the same number, we still get the same index. The only difference is it starts searching from the end of the array instead of from the beginning. Now, really quick, what happens if we search for something that doesn't exist? So in this case, search for a 30. As mentioned, it returns a negative 1. So what's frequently done with index of or last index of, if you're looking to see if something is inside an array, is check to see if the value is greater than negative 1. If it's greater than negative 1, then you know that it's inside of the array somewhere. All right, so that's index of and last index of. Those two commands are pretty straightforward. But what would we do if we needed to find a value that is greater than some number or use some other expression to find the value we are looking for? We wouldn't be able to do that with index of or last index of. Now, in the past, this would have required a loop or another array prototype method to cycle through all the values. But let's look at doing this with find index and find, which, as I mentioned, were added in ES6. So first off, find index and find, they're both methods that are a part of the prototype of the array object. They take a function as the first argument. And so basically, we're passing in a function. Now, the purpose of that function is to evaluate the elements in the array and evaluate them using some criteria. So since we're passing in a function, it provides a lot more flexibility for determining whether an array contains something or not. 
Now, fine index and find will return an index or a value. Fine index returns the index, the position of the element that matches, where find returns the actual value of that element. That's how we would determine which we wanted to use. If we wanted to retrieve back the value, then we would use find. If we just needed the index position, we would use find index. Now the function that we pass into find index and find, that function can receive three arguments. And we can then use those arguments in the body of our function to determine what we're searching for. So the first argument is the array element. So the actual element in the array will be returned to that function. Now find and find index are going to go through each element in the array until it finds something that matches your function. So as it goes through those elements, it will pass them in to the function. Now the second parameter is the index. So we can pass in the index of that element. The third parameter is the entire array. We could pass that entire array in. Now it's important to note that find index and find will not modify the array at all. So it doesn't mutate the array. All right, so let's look at how we would make this happen. I'm going to jump to Sublime for this part. We already have an array set up. Once again, just some numbers. We're going to keep it pretty simple. Now the first thing I want to do is define a function. I'm going to call this function over 30 because I, what I want it to do is to search through the array and find an element that is over 30. Now, as mentioned, the function that we use, that we pass into find index or find, can take three parameters. The first one is the element in the array, the second one is the index, and the third one is the actual array itself. I'm going to have it pass in all three of those just so I can show you how this works. And the first thing I'm going to do is log to the console so you can see that these are all being passed into the array. This way you can see how it cycles through that array trying to find an element that matches the expression that we'll put into this function. So I'm just going to concatenate all these together. Oops. Finally, the last thing we'll concatenate on the end is the array. Okay. So that's our first statement in the function. The second statement is a return statement. So the function that we pass in to find index or find is a predicate function. What do I mean by predicate function? Well, that's a function that returns either true or false. And so for example, I could put an expression like this. So if the element is greater than 30, the element of the array is greater than 30, then we'll return true. That's how we'll know that the element matches our criteria. If it returns false, then it knows that the element does not match our criteria. All right, so that's our function. Let's go ahead and try it out. We're going to run find index on the array. So we use dot syntax to do that. And we're passing in the function. The function is what we pass in. Now there is a second parameter we could pass in to find and find index, and that is the value of this. If we needed to indicate what the value of this is, then we could do that as the second parameter. So that will go ahead and run it. Now in order to see what we find, I'm going to log the results to the console. All right, let me save that. Go ahead and open. Now here it is going through the array. Notice that we're getting all these elements passed in. We're getting the actual value. We're getting the index. And then we're getting the full array. So here's the first value, second value, third value. When it gets to the fourth value, that's where it finds something that is greater than 30. And that matches. 
And so then it returns the index. Here's the index here. That's what gets returned. We're seeing a number three there. So that worked great for us. Now let's use find this time. So let me comment out what we've done here. And this time I'm going to define the function inside the find method. I'm going to actually pass in an anonymous function because I'll define it at the time I'm setting up the find method. So we'll return the results to the variable result. Here's our array. I'm going to do find, and then we simply pass in a function. This is going to be an anonymous function. I'm only going to accept one element this time. The others are optional. And we are going to return a true or a false, because this is a predicate function. And we're going to check two things. We want to find a number that's between 5 and 10. And then we'll log that to the console as well. OK, simple. So we'll go ahead and refresh. And there's the value, 9, that fits in between 5 and 10. Now with find, remember, we get the value, not the index. So if we look back at our array, Here's our number 9, and it returned the actual value, not the index for that value. Now one final note here, when using a lot of these array methods, it's a great application for arrow functions because it makes it simpler to define the function as an anonymous function right here inside of the find method or find index method. So really quick, let me show you what that would look like with an arrow function. The function keyword is not required. The fat arrow is. The return keyword is not required. But of course the expression is and we don't need the curly braces. So that would be our arrow function equivalent. And we get 9. Now just in finishing up this tutorial, what would we do if we needed to check every value? Find index and find as soon as it finds something that matches the criteria within the function that we pass in, it will end. Well, if we needed to check every value for something, we would use one of the other array methods, such as for each map filter, depending on what we wanted our output to be like. We could even use a loop. Now, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like. For more resources on JavaScript, you can do one of the following. Click the video link in the center of the screen to access another tutorial right away. You can click the circle link on the left to subscribe to our channel. I release a new tutorial each week. And to visit the All Things JavaScript website for full courses and a complete list of all our tutorials, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.